if this red light is not on. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about relationships and getting into a relationship and my views on relationships, whether it's good you know, to stay in relationships or if, if it comes a time when you should leave or times when you think it's good to sort of stay in relationships as well. My, my general, you know, and my own, my own feelings around it myself and my own take on relationships. And so I would say, um, one of the things is I feel is if, you know, because one of the historic things I've had is to be a caretaker. Uh, and 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 I get I can get a payoff from being the one who's looking after people. Uh, it makes me feel important, needed, wanted, and it's a great role, you know, to be the one who's responsible. And also this idea that they won't be able to survive without me. You know, if uh, if I let them go, then they'll fall to pieces. Uh, so they need me forever, you know, because I'm that powerful. But that's one archetype. I'm just saying that there can be, there can be, that, that can, I, I like to call it an archetype, or you can call it a pattern, uh, this thing of a caretaker or looking after or, or looking after someone. And also the payoff of thinking that um, they, you know, the universe can't take care of them. God can't be, you know, God can't be the one who's going to look after them. They need me personally to be the one who's going to save them, save their ass every day. And I can't. It's not. It's not right for me to let them go. Generally speaking, I also uh, think it's important. Um, there's two things. One is uh, if there's a mismatch with a person. If I if I was in a relationship with someone, if I felt there's a mismatch on the levels of consciousness, um, and that, um, and sometimes as well for people who are doing a lot of spiritual work, uh, if another person is not doing a lot of spiritual work or a lot of inner work there can be a, like a mismatch in the levels of consciousness. So you're doing a lot of spiritual work, you're going up higher and they're still not doing much work and they stay at a certain level. That I think is a, is a, is a genuine reason to, to let go of a relationship. And everything I'm saying, there is a, you know, I'm not making definitive things because there's context to everything, but that can be a reason to let, let them go. In terms of what if a person is very, very needy and, and is sort of saying like, I'll commit suicide or I need you, I've invested everything in you, if you leave me I'll be devastated. Or you just have a, a, an inner dialogue, like if you leave them they're going to go into a terrible place and you'll feel guilty because you hurt them and you're responsible for their emotions. On a certain level, I think, um, if the only reason I'm staying in a relationship is because I think they'll just be hurt because I'm going to leave them and they're going to face pain and that's the only reason I'm not letting them go, I would say um, a few things. One is I could transcend my guilt uh, and transcend the thoughts that I have to be the one that's responsible to save them. And thank you. And and uh, uh, let them. Uh, and then when when I've cleared that feeling of guilt, and I've cleared those thoughts that they need me to be personally responsible. I'm responsible for their for the breakup feelings. When I clear that. Then I'd, I would, I'd, I'd also pray for the willingness to, to let them go and trust that. I always feel when there is when there's clear guidance to let a person go, it will be in the interest of the highest good for both people, because I'm not going to be the right one for them. So, uh, and actually, pain is actually a teaching instrument of the universe. You know, so then I could be getting into enabling. You know, I could be getting into a system where I feel if I don't let you go. Uh, you're going to go into pain, but I'm going to stay with you for the next 50 years because I don't want to feel the guilt of making you feel some pain. Mm. Uh, and, and therefore, you're going to have to have me, and I don't really love you, but I don't want you to feel pain and go through the pain of a breakup. But also, the pain of the breakup might actually be good that they feel the pain, they mm. let go of some of their attachment, and the universe will then give yeah. them a better person. They get an opportunity. <coughs> So giving people pain is not always a bad thing, I don't think. Giving people pain can be a good thing that they have to process something. And then they become, I sort of see, if they process the pain rather than eat donuts on it, then they will now attract a better partner because they've, they've now gone up in vibration. And so I've actually helped them, whether they know it or not, by giving them some pain and saying, look, I'm sorry, you know, I can't, you know, I'm not going to be your, your boyfriend any longer. 
I know you've invested a lot in me, I know you're going to go into pain, I, you know, but uh, I need to move on. And that would be good, for, I would see that as being good for them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to get some pain, they're going to process it, they're going to attract, and the university, if they process it, of course, if they don't act on it, they might meet another person exactly like me, who's just in them, just to look mm -hmm. after them, for guilt. Mm -hmm. But if they process it, they're probably going to meet an upgraded model from the universe. So, so you know, my last words are, <laughs> As I've done to you, just don't eat dirt, sort of, and just process it out. And you're gonna get a better, you're gonna get a better boyfriend. <laughs> you're gonna get a better boyfriend uh, than, than the one you've landed in with me. So, so, so. I, I, I bought some humor. I've been trying, trying to put in some humor in there as well. Don't take it too seriously. Um, fun. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. We're recording. Um, yeah. Uh, just as, uh, people aren't, aren't aware I knew of that. We okay. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. She, she, she knows. Yeah. So, um, so that's one way. So th these are like a miracle is a shift in perception, because if I'm stuck in the idea that, oh, I don't want to give them guilt, I don't want to give them pain. If you see it differently, then giving them pain is a good thing, and then you can let them go, because you're you're allowing them to process and get something better. And also you can look at it on, 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 a, on, on a certain level that um, if I let them go and I process my guilt of having to be there for them uh, and, and my guilt that I have to be their caretaker and never give anyone pain, then I'll also get a better model later on. So that will be a good thing for me to overcome this thing of getting into very long codependent relationships with people where I can get enmeshed, I can get so enmeshed with them that I can get the feelings of they need me forever. If I leave them, they'll fall to pieces. I can get that thought. Or um, also the thing of, um, I can also be getting an unconscious payoff of wanting to be needed and wanted. And, oh, you need me so much. You're gonna go in so much pain. You'll be so devastated. Uh, and I, I can get kind of an ego gain mm. from feeling so, mm. so important. Like, no one's going to need me as much as you. You say, like, oh, you know, I can't survive without you. Uh, so it's a great payoff for, for my ego to think, like, oh, you, you're worshipping me. You know, or another way to see it is, um, I'm not, you know, another way which is, I think, great is, this really helped me with a lot of the mystics, is actually when you let go, you're helping both people. Uh, even if you can stay in a relationship and let go, or, or, or let them go and let go. But by actually letting go, it, it is very, very powerful for both parties. Mm -hmm. um, so, the thing of like, uh, so always re remember that for me. Also, I also see that if I really, really love someone, I can let them go and also love them by processing all my hooks mm -hmm. and pray for them. So it's not necessary that out of love I have to be physically there for a person. If I had a really, like, I felt like I had a really long heart, heart, heart can I, I don't know what to call it, but I wanted to keep helping them after I say, look, I'm not going to be your boyfriend, I can send them love, I can pray for them, I can, but the way I would probably do it was to clear all my baggage for the reasons that I met them were probably divine, and there was stuff that was coming up for me and for them which was why the assignment of, of an attraction occurred. So if I just clear all my stuff of loss or things, or all the stuff they irritated me with, like, you know, they didn't, they left their socks on the floor, uh, or, or they had an attacking personality, they criticized me, or whatever it is. If I let that go, I know they also get healing when I let it go, because often there's a joint karma, there's a joint bond, and when I clear it on my side, the other person, because on a, on a deep spiritual level, we're all one. So often you, I, I would see it like divine assignments are because there's a match for, learn, for transcendence that occurs. So if I just transcend things, even if they don't do the work, I can do the work on their behalf. Kind of surrogate, if that makes sense. I can surrogately let go of my stuff and they'll get the benefit of me doing the work even if they don't do the work. So I don't really see that... Um, that I mean, the thing with... Uh, like if someone was to threaten me with, like, if you leave me, I'll commit suicide. Um, which can happen, or you're afraid that they might commit suicide. I mean, I would, I would say, like anyone, 
you probably met them when they were already yeah. like 99% uh, of the way towards that. Um, so the thing that really helped me with Dr. Hawkins, he says like a lot of people, you meet, you'll get to meet people in life and then you'll find that they're very, very unstable or they may be suicidal or, or very, have very, very dark natures. And then you know them for a while and then even if you let them go and they commit suicide, taking full karma, I mean usually the effects one has on another person aren't that great, calmly speaking. You know, like a person's had their whole life and all their incidences and all their traumas and they, let's say they're 99%, 99.9% already suicidal as you meet them. And, uh, and then you suddenly can feel over-responsible, you know, and then you said, oh, this person is suicidal, so I have to be there for them forever because if I let them go and they commit suicide, I'm responsible. I, I wouldn't take it, I, w I wouldn't look at it like that way. Uh, not, I mean, this might sound pretty cold, but I think a lot of the karma that a person you meet them is already done when you meet them. So, uh, like if I met someone who's suicidal or someone who was like a donut addict and, and I got into a relationship with a donut addict and they said, you know, you're the reason I'm not eating donuts today. Uh, and then I say, look, they're not right for me. I'm going to let you go. And then they, they start eating donuts the next day. Uh, am I responsible for forcing them to become a donut addict? <laughs> you know, committing suicide. It was the same thing. I'm trying to talk, making a joke out of it. But it's a slightly s severe level. But actually, the thing that a lot of karmic imprint is already done. Mm. So you taking on a huge... I mean, I understand the thing of taking on guilt. You know, like if I was like helping someone and then I stopped helping them and they, you know, I was helping them with their donut addiction and they started taking donuts, I could easily feel guilty that I'm responsible. I made them pick up the donuts because I wasn't there for them. But they were probably already, they were a donut addict when I met them. They stopped while I was there. And the universe, also to trust that the universe will take care of everyone. Um, I also see in past lives, you know, like people who can't get over their addictions who commit suicide through addiction, they're just going to come back again and have another opportunity to do it. So I don't really see it like it's a finite, this is the way I sort of see it. Like uh, you get a chance to transcend. Um, there is another point, I'll put the opposite point of view. Like if I was in a relationship and let's say they're criticizing me and they're giving me a really hard time and I don't like them and they're irritating me non-stop, but I feel intuitively like they are an assignment for me for the time being. And actually for my, my spiritual, my deeper spiritual intuition is, even though I don't like everything that's happening, it's good, it's right for the time being for me to be within a relationship with them. And it's not, it's, it's like an inner spiritual prompt that I should clear my stuff. Uh, and uh, um, then if I felt that deep thing, even though my ego is irritated with them, I feel deeper spiritual intuition prompt that for some reason I need to clear this stuff because this is my assignment. If I dump them now, I'm going to get another person yeah. who's going to irritate me in the same way. I mean, let me try and say something. Let, let's say they criticize, let's say they're always criticizing me for not earning enough money, for example. And they criticize me every day for not earning enough money just made that up and I go well I'm going to dump them the easy ways to dump them because they're criticizing me but I feel no no actually I think this has come up quite often you know people do that so I right I'll stay in it and transcend it and and then after I've transcended it see if I still want to dump them so I might get a deeper spiritual prompt that I sh this is a lesson for me to transcend my own baggage and still see if I want to stay with them and stay with them for the time being and uh, and then, and then still see, because sometimes if I transcend it, it was actually a lesson that they were there to help me to transcend that. So it's good mm. for me to stay in, because if I dump them now, I'm probably going to get another girlfriend who's just going to tell me you're not earning enough money. So yeah. the question then I say is, is <coughs> yeah. transcending that getting to the point where their opinion no longer matters, or is yeah. transcending that meaning you've got to go out and earn more money so they don't mind? <laughs> Well, that's a, context, that's a contextual question, yeah. but in general, my preference is usually to trans... It's a good question, actually. My general thing is to transcend, because sometimes when you transcend, I'll earn more money anyway, 
uh, if that's what is God's will, or or it might be God's will that I don't transcend that and I just carry on not earning enough money, but it won't, it won't, it won't bother me. So then they'll have to like go, they'll have to come to an acceptance. He's never going to earn the amount of money I want him to earn, mm -hmm. and either they're going to leave, or they'll accept it and stop nagging. You know, anyway, either they carry on nagging, it won't affect me. So transcending, I will also think. I mean, sometimes, yeah, you know, you're, if you have a 12-step sponsor, they'll kick you and go, like, you've got 10 kids, you can't afford to buy the nappies any longer, so go get a job, whether you like it or not, don't transcend it. You know, so you need to buy nappies in the physical world, or whatever it is. So you get your, your ass kicked. But um, there, there is, I mean, a lot of people in these rooms will know that when you transcend, often a miracle will happen. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you might have bizarre things happen, like someone's nagging you, earn more money, otherwise I'm going to dump you and then you transcend it and suddenly either they stop nagging you and they say actually it's enough what we've got or you suddenly win the lottery or money comes in from your great granddad who's just died and left left uh, inheritance for you it's somehow that identification with that let's say that the oneness of that that lesson that's being brought up for both parties with money as one as you transcend it completely often a miracle will come in I mean, sometimes the lesson will be um, someone will just kick your ass and say, get a job. But often, miracles often come in because there's great power in transcending because you don't mm. hold on to the data. Often the reason one is, sometimes it's not money. Sometimes the universe has many ways of bringing in abundance and prosperity, uh, which is not just getting a job. Uh, I've noticed that myself. Sometimes if you're doing the thing you want to do, and with spiritual teachers, Often the universe will provide means and shelter and food uh, in mystical ways. Uh, earning money is just one of the eager references of how security is brought, but there are other more spiritually abundant ways of, uh, of letting go of lessons that have been brought up for transcendence. Um, pushing away availability, I think I've answered that, pushing away availability. Criticalness you can transcend. Um, um, yeah, I think uh, abandonment. I, I think generally if you're with someone, I mean just talking general, uh, generalities, and you feel on a deep level it's not completely right, and uh, I think it's, it's, it's generally speaking it's good to let go and trust that, um, uh, that they will get an opportunity to get a better model and transcend some of their stuff and also get a a thing to transcend, unless there's a deep intuition it's meant to be for the time being and that I need to process because, you know, they are the thing. Because if I, if, if I feel it's a lesson for me, then to get rid of them, I'll just get another model that will just give me the same problem over again. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so might as well get it, might as well transcend the lesson in this relationship rather than ignore the problem and get another person who does the same thing to me in the next relationship. So it's a bit of a complicated answer. But, uh, uh, and I sort of hedge my bets on both sides, both camps, so I shouldn't get too many hate comments, but, uh, yeah. but, uh, 